Welcome to episode 636 of Salcedo Paranormal. I'm your host, James Salcedo, and tonight I'm sharing true paranormal stories from the web. As always, you can find all episodes of the show along with links to social media and other ways to contact me at the podcast page. And that is Salcedo Paranormal dot podbean dot com that's s a l s i d o paranormal dot podbean dot com always happy to hear from you all whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or accounts of paranormal experiences whether they're your own or from others that you trust happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them thank you all for listening whether you are here for the live streams on discord or if you listen to the podcast or YouTube feeds, or on the Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting, there you can hear replays of two episodes of my show uh, every night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right before Trouble Minds Radio comes on. And as always, I want to thank Michael Strange, host of Trouble Minds Radio, for having me on the network and putting all my shows up there. If you like to support my show, you can do that uh, by sharing the show and rating and reviewing it on your favorite podcast platforms. You can also find paranormal fiction and nonfiction books I've written over on Amazon, including my most recent book, uh, Salcedo Paranormal Experiences, that is uh, tied directly to the podcast. Uh, or you, you can sign up for the Patreon page where you'll get two extra episodes <clears throat> Excuse me of... Um, True Paranormal Stories on the Web every week, whenever possible. Or you can just make one-time donations through PayPal. Support is never expected, but always appreciated, as there are expenses in making these shows. Uh, from equipment to research materials to travel expenses in some cases. Um, so I think that takes care of everything, and we can get right to the, uh, the true stories here. Uh, speaking of um, equipment, I, have to, I had to order a new mouse pad talking about mice in the chat there um, just because of conversation during the break and you know, it's kind of funny um, but yeah I have to get a new mouse pad so I already ordered it and it's on its way we'll be on its way soon um, anyway let me see here getting to the file again here this one says my daughter worked in a school chartered by Abraham Lincoln. The school had been remodeled, but had a long history of ghost stories and phantom school bells. That's amazing. Had a story about a bell like that once, uh, quite a while ago, where people were hearing, hearing a bell when there was no bell in the area. Anyway, uh, one morning, I was dropping my daughter off at work. We had passed a uh, fatal car accident on the way. As we arrived at the school, we saw a woman in 1970s clothes holding a purse and notebook. My daughter assumed the woman was a substitute teacher wearing vintage clothes. I helped my daughter unload something from the van. My daughter greeted the woman and unlocked the door. The woman clearly asked both of us, did you see that awful accident? As I walked back to my car, another employee arrived and they entered the building. The woman continued talking to my daughter after I left. Later, my daughter texted me saying that the other employee hadn't seen anyone else in the building besides my daughter. My daughter searched the entire building, but found no one else present. And that's where that one ends. So that's amazing in a way. I don't know if it's directly tied to the accident or just, an, again, some kind of a time anomaly. Um, just a brief overlap. And then it was gone. And then the person was gone. The woman was gone. But... Um, yeah, that's a wild one there. Uh, I don't know what what to make of that one. If it was a, if it was an apparition, it was obviously not, did not look like 
transparent or translucent, not like a like a TV version of a ghost necessarily. So um, that's what my mind always goes to now with um, with figures like that that appear to be solid that then just vanish, or you just can't find them; they're just gone. Um, especially in the cases where they you don't see them vanish. I mean, not that it really matters either way. It could still be a time anomaly either way. But um, but yeah, that's an amazing one there. Uh, 70s clothes. I mean, there are people that will, that I've heard, because I don't keep track of clothes or fashion or anything like that, but I've heard that people will wear clothes from all different periods of time. So that's not really... That in itself is not um, impossible for it to have been a regular person just wearing those kind of clothes. But also, if you think about that, again, going back to the idea of some kind of either a spirit from that time period or a time anomaly of a living person that somehow the two time periods overlapped, it could have been genuine uh, clothing, not vintage, but actual clothing from the 70s, from that time period. So... Thought that was a neat one. I, I love it where where people at first the, the accounts were people have no idea that there there was anything um there 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 was anything going on there. Yeah, like a time lock in for the teller. Uh, DG says in the chat there. I love the ones where people have no idea at first that anything paranormal or anything unusual had happened until after the fact. I, I love those because that's just that it, it's um it's really amazing because then you have to wonder how does that work uh, even more so than some of the other ones. So, but anyway, uh, moving on to the next one here. Uh, let's see here. This one says, "I was around seven years old when this happened." It's amazing. Just real quick, um, I was on uh, um, very. I was very lucky and very uh, grateful at that time. A little while back, uh, Michael Strange had me on his show, Trouble Minds Radio, to talk about uh, my book and the topic that he chose. Um, I mean, that we talked about that night a lot was um, how often uh, kids seem to have experiences, children seem to have experiences, and I said in that show, you know. It seems like three or two to three or maybe four out of every like ten stories that I find of of experiences <clears throat> excuse me are from people that are adults that are recounting their experiences they had as kids so the, every time I find one of those uh, uh situations like that tonight i'm th and lately I've been thinking about that and how I think uh that's fairly accurate still still holds up so um, anyway, I was around seven years old when this happened. My family and I lived in a house where various odd things occurred. The strangest experience I had was when I saw the hat man. It was late at night and I was sleeping in my parents' bedroom. Did I just read that one? No, I never mind. I don't think I did. Uh, let me see here. That's weird. Hang on. Nope. Okay, it's not the same. Not the same one. No. It, hang on. Uh, looks like I have a repeat in here. I apologize for that. I don't know how that happened. That's weird. Um, so we're gonna skip that one. I apologize for that. Uh, false start. Uh, let me see here. Okay. So going on to the next one. Um. Copy and paste is usually a very good thing, but apparently there it did not work or worked too well. So anyway, uh, this one says, <laughs> I was around 12 or 13 years old. It was a Friday during summer break around 10 or 11 p.m. I was watching TV with my dad in the basement. We were sitting on a couch. A recliner was also uh, in, the, in the room as well. Diagonally to the right was a cluttered storage room. The storage room contained a broken computer, memorabilia collected by my dad, and old toys. 
The room was difficult to navigate due to the clutter. A window with a nearby, nearby street light barely illuminated uh, can't talk illuminated the room. Both of us saw the silhouette of a tall man walk from left to right in front of the window, but we didn't hear any footsteps. We both reacted immediately. My dad, who had shared old ghost stories before, considered this his top paranormal experience. I can still recall the facial features of the silhouette. The whole thing was both cool and spooky. And that's where that one ends. Sorry about the uh, what happened there. I don't know what that was. But anyway. Um, so, yeah, that's a neat one. Uh, sounds like a sort of a shadow figure type, possibly, uh, thing going on there. I don't know. Uh, that's a that's a neat one, and I'm glad that that both the the the, the father and then the the kid, the um the now the adult writer, there, uh, they both saw it at the same time. Uh, those kinds of shared experiences are great for for validation, in a way. So, but um, okay. So yeah, that was a neat one. Basements again. Um, that's where I had my first paranormal experience, of course, as I've shared many times before. It seems like basements and attics, they, uh, they are used as tropes in, in movies and TV shows and things like that for a reason. A lot of experiences seem to happen in and around those areas. So not that, that the entire, not that, that they can't happen anywhere else. I mean, obviously, things, paranormal things happen all the time all over the place, but basements and attics, um, I think because in a lot of cases they're enclosed, and uh, yeah, lots of let water and electrical in basements usually, and, and even sometimes uh, in attics, you have your you know, like other air conditioners or whatever. Sometimes I believe stored in attics as well. So, um, and I know I, I believe I've heard before that in like hotels and things, they have a lot of their a lot of that kind of stuff. It, and the, near the top of the building as much as they do in the bottom of the building uh, to get to those higher floors there. So, and maybe even have that sort of every few floors in between for some of the, the larger the larger ones there. So, yeah, lots of uh, water. I mean, that's why that's same thing with kitchens and bathrooms. They're just, they're full of water and electricity uh, going on there. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, um, let me get chat here again. Ricky says, and you going to where you normally don't go, uh, yeah, makes you extra on edge to sense extra stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yep, definitely. Even if, um, if not, especially if you hear about maybe from other people that, oh, I don't like that basement or the attic, it's creepy. Then you're already getting that suggestion that it's creepy. Um, so, but yeah, uh, makes, makes a lot of sense there. Um, it's, and again, it's been used so much in fiction that, uh, it, uh, definitely tropes are there for a reason, I think in a lot of cases, and that's, that's why that's there. So, um, but yeah, I've had, uh, I'm just trying to think of all the experiences I've had in basements and attics. I have never really been in an attic. Uh, but basements, definitely. Um, even if I haven't had experiences, I've had feelings in a couple of basements over the years. And uh, just feelings of presences and all that kind of stuff going on there. So, um, the, looking at the chat here, um, DG says, I moved in and three days later the sewer backed up. Maybe the old lady who... Died here is still angry. Yeah, could be. I don't know. Um, wow. Yeah, I hope that uh, works itself out there. But uh, getting to the next uh, story here. Let's see here. Okay. Um, let's see here. I lost my spot. Okay. 
This one says, I was in seventh grade standing at a bus stop in November in the upper Midwest of the U.S. I was playing on my phone, but I looked up and saw a large shadow figure inches away from me. When I blinked, the figure had moved a few feet away. After blinking again, the figure was about 150 feet away, near some woods, and then it vanished. There was one other person at the bus stop, but they were on their phone the whole time, so they didn't see anything. I always wonder about that. Did they or did they not? Because if they were not into any of this stuff, they may have decided not to react. But anyway, it says, I felt like I was being watched more often at that bus stop after this happened, which was about six years ago. And still do so, do sometimes today when I walk around the area. And that's where that one ends. Um, yeah, the woods, the, the forest, that's another one of those areas where a lot seems to happen. Uh, a lot seems to be centered around that. Uh, and um, I may need to do a, do a show on that at some point. Uh, what is going on with... Uh, with uh, with forests or with woods and things like that, did a a, a few shows a couple of years ago on mountains uh, with a good friend of the show uh, Jen uh, Jen Arcana or Jen the Arcana Observer. Um, that was a lot of fun, and uh, maybe maybe we'll have to do some other shows about other types of regions and the the activity that happens there. I think that might be good. So. But um, but yeah, forests, the woods seem to uh, have their own activity uh, in and around them. So, and the way this figure was able to move at what seems like it'd be an impossible pace for a regular person, um, that's amazing as well. Being from inches to feet, over a hundred feet away. So, uh, moving on to the next one here, and uh, let me see. Okay. This one says, I'm 50, I am 56, and I've never had a paranormal experience until May of this year. My best friend, who was more like a brother, passed away on May 17th at age 46. In the early hours of May 20th, I heard a voice say, hey, while I was lying on my right side. I responded, yeah, and didn't think much of it. I couldn't reach for my phone to see what time it was. I wasn't frightened, but on guard. Still, I went back to sleep. Two weeks ago, around 8 p.m., I saw a green orb split into a line on the wall towards a small shrine dedicated to my deceased friend which included his cross, a silver necklace with his name, and his favorite baseball cap. Last week I saw a silent circle of lights moving slowly at about one to 2,000 feet above me, moving at about 40 miles per hour over my house. I ran inside from my... Uh, phone, but by the time I got back out, the object had disappeared. It was an, a solid object with rotating lights. I am sure of this because the stars were obscured by the object. I have always been inquisitive about the supernatural, but I've never had any experiences before. I caught a good two minutes of video of the same that same object in the sky the night before last at the end of my garden and that's where that one ends so it sounds like unfortunately their their friend passed it sounds like maybe they've become more sensitive or open up to maybe possibilities because of that um i don't know it it sounds like there's and of course, it, it, I think that can, that can be the case. But also, uh, does that allow people to see um, objects 
unusual things, uh, basically the UAP and, and um and identifying an anomalous phenomenon or aerial pheno phenomenon, depending on what, how you want to go with that, does that open them up to see those kinds of things as well? And that's something I don't know. But uh, or was that not connected? Which would be an amazing coincidence if that's the case. Uh, so yeah, the uh, the combination of light and that UF that sort of object in the sky UFO, if you want to call it that. I still think of that because I'm a little bit older, I guess, than the UAP thing, uh, as far as I've heard. But um, are they connected? I don't know. Light does seem to be present in so many uh, unexplained things, paranormal things. Uh, could be connected. Could be that it's just it's not, but it's similar. So, but uh, let's see how long the next one is, and I will read it if I have uh, if I have time. Uh, let's see. Uh, this one says, my grandmother passed away in March. She was an amazing woman, loved to this day. In January, two months before her passing, my great uncle's second wife passed away. My grandmother, mom, and dad attended her funeral to support the great uncle. According to them, the funeral was a disaster, a wreck. The officiant was a stranger. He didn't finish his prayers. He started and switched topics at random. My grandmother told my mom not to let anyone who, who didn't know her officiate the funeral. My grandmother passed away too, uh, unexpectedly too much, two months later. No one felt that they could officiate her funeral without breaking down in the process. So we had to get an unknown uh, minister. The minister did a great job, but as he started his prayer, my grandmother's casket closed on its own. No one was near it. No one was touching. Uh, no, no one was touching it, and no one was walking around. All the windows were closed. The loud noise stunned everyone into silence. But then my mom started laughing, and the rest of us joined her. We believed that it was my grandmother's way of getting in her last words, showing she was there watching, and that everything would be okay. And that's where that one ends. Um, that is amazing in a way uh sort of making a joke of the whole thing in a way i think um uh, uh either she was mad or she was just making a reference uh to that previous conversation like what did i tell you all you know and here we are um I, I, it's hard i think to know for sure if she was mad or not but definitely um it's possible and or like i said she was just sort of just wanted everyone to know, like, hey, uh, we, we talked about this, and then maybe laughing. Because, I mean, the feeling that everyone got after, they were all laughing. So I wonder if if hopefully it wasn't so much an anger thing as it was just, uh, again, sort of a sign. So, But um, that's all the time we have for this episode. Thank you all for listening, and I'll talk to you all next time on Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.